We continue our Missing in America series tonight with the disappearance of Kathy Ann James, a 60-year-old woman from Oklahoma who went missing two months ago. Her car found abandoned on the side of a highway, her wallet, cash, and ID all still inside, but no sign of Kathy. And the last people believed to have come in contact with her were police officers who think Kathy was experiencing some sort of mental health episode. Correspondent Marky Martin visited Oklahoma this week to try to find some answers, and she joins us live tonight with the latest on Kathy's disappearance. Marky. Hey, good evening, Marty. We're about to show you body cam footage of the last time Kathy James was seen. This was in Tonkawa, Oklahoma, which is about an hour and a half north of Oklahoma City. Well, police responded to this call from witnesses who said, hey, there's a woman out here who has no idea where she is, and it was Kathy. Her family tells me she does suffer from schizophrenia, and after two hours of questioning, she is given the green light to continue on her way, and she hasn't been seen since. Shortly after 2 p.m. on September 4th, 2021, we received a phone call saying that uh, a elderly African-American woman had just walked into someone's living room. That phone call brought Tonkawa police to this neighborhood. The woman in question, 60-year-old Kathy James. Hey, Miss James, you doing okay? Yeah, doing okay. Okay. Hey, um, what, kind of, what kind of medications do you take? James confusion is clear as she's questioned inside her Dodge Charger. And you've seen Frida? No, Frida's no. not here. Ma'am, do you know what town you're in? Yeah, Muskogee. She thought she was in Muskogee. She kept saying Okmogee, Muskogee, and that is two hours away. She's convinced she's hearing voices and being watched by cameras. A camera. That's Ken Thompson. Oh, Ken, Ken Thompson is following you. Okay. Yeah. Police Chief Nicholas Payne says his officers agreed. James was likely having a mental health episode. For almost two hours, they question her, even looping in an on-call mental health specialist to evaluate her well-being. <laughs> Despite pushback from police, therapists decide her episode isn't severe enough to warrant taking her in. She knew her name. She knew she could produce credentials saying who she is. She had an uh, itinerary for where she was going. I'm going to my friend's house in Muskogee. She thought she was here. That, I mean, you can't just take away someone's freedom because they got lost. But her family wishes they had because it's the last known contact anyone had with James. They knew. She was not in her right mind. They knew. Brittany Beal is Kathy's niece. About a week after her aunt's interaction with Tonkawa police, Kathy's car was found abandoned on the highway 30 miles away. It's, I've, I've gotten calls from the hospital saying that they picked her up, they've got her there, but never, you know, she just leaves her car somewhere with her wallet inside of it and her money. Beal believes something criminal has taken place and blames law enforcement, who she claims didn't make an effort to call enough family. Because I would have picked her up. I always do. But in the body camera video, each officer is seen jotting down numbers, making several attempts to reach out to Kathy's contacts. Are, are you Kathy James's sister? The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation now investigating it as a missing persons case. Kathy's last known location, the town of Blackwell, just north of Tonkawa. She's seen on this surveillance video loitering at a gas station for four hours before disappearing into the night. Chief Payne says these cases are difficult. When authorities on scene know something is wrong. My worry, Sam, is, is, is you seem extremely confused. No, I'm On a scale of one to ten, you're about a, you're about a, a, a definite 28 right now on how confused you are, okay? But legally, their hands are tied. And unfortunately, we don't know where she's at now. But everything that we did that day is the proper protocol set in place. Everything we did that day is meant to keep this from happening. OSBI releasing this photo of Kathy, a more recent image, and the version of Kathy people should keep their eyes peeled for. Until the family has more answers, Beale returns to this voicemail from her aunt every day just to hear her voice, a gentle reminder of the woman she misses dearly. I have literally dreamt of her knocking on my door. <laughs> it's getting cold. 
Like, what if she is lost? What if she is cold? Like, all I can do is wonder. Now, the other part to this story that is tough, Chief Payne tells me all Kathy had to do was say, I need help or I shouldn't be behind the wheel. And that's when they could have taken her in voluntarily. Anybody with any tips or information is asked to contact OSBI. Marnie. Oh, Marky, I just it feels like th this could have been prevented, um, but it, it, it's a difficult case. So based on what police have found so far, Kathy's car, her wallet, her money was inside. Um, with what they've seen and that evidence, do they suspect foul play at all? Yeah, you know, they found all of her personal belongings right there inside the vehicle. But I will say the chief did tell me this week he couldn't really go into further detail about the items just because this case is still ongoing. But I actually got in Kathy's car yesterday. I looked for myself. Many of her belongings still there, including that wallet, some clothing. Um, but it's interesting. They say that, you know, based on what they found, the items inside, the state they in which they found the car, it was not enough to determine whether or not foul play had been involved. Um, so that question, Marnie, does remain unanswered. Marky, was Kathy living alone? Was anybody responsible for looking after her? She was not living alone. Kathy actually had a female roommate down in Oklahoma City. And based on accounts from the family, this roommate sounds like a lifelong best friend, somebody that had been in their lives for years. But not only a friend, it also sounds like this person was um, kind of fulfilling a caretaker role as well. I know, according to the niece, she had partial control over Kathy's finances, helped her pay bills, uh, pay her car payment, etc. And this woman was actually the person who reached out in the first place to say, hey, haven't heard from her. I think something might be wrong here. But according to the niece, this roommate slash friend has not been questioned at this time. Wow. Just a, a disappearance vanished into a thin air. Uh, we hope that, that something um, triggers someone's memory seeing Kathy tonight. Marky Martin live for us tonight on this latest missing case. Marky, thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.